Karen Hodgins, creator of Nifty Numbers Family Math Night. And in this video, I want to talk to you about the Estimation Jar at your Family Math Night event. Now, the Estimation Jar is a hugely popular station, and it would make sense because the person who estimates the closest to what's inside the jar gets to take the jar home. So I'm going to share with you um, how uh, I set up my estimation table, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something new that I'm going to do at my next uh, event. So I like to have two jars on my table. Um, one of them is a K2 jar, there's a little table tent there that denotes that it's K2. And then the other one is for the older students, either 3, 6, or 3, 5, depending on um, the grade levels at uh, your school. And the reason I have two jars is because the um, items that are in the K2 jar are larger. Um, these kids have had less, less uh, experience dealing with things like estimation, and so um, I want their items to be a little bit different than the older kids who have smaller items inside their jar because they need a little bit more of a challenge. Now, the items inside the jar, um, it's important that whatever you choose, um, they're the same size. So if you choose uh, gummy bears, obviously they're all going to be you know, gummy bears of, of the same size. Um, that's really important because that's going to help them make um, more accurate um, predictions. So because I have two different jars, um, I have two different estimation slips that um, they fill in to put in to put their predictions in the jar. And I run those off on different um, colored um, paper because at the end of the evening, it's real easy for me to sort um, all the um, estimates into two piles. Um, so um, this one here is my um, K2 uh, slips and these are my um, three, uh, six slips. On our website, familymathnight.com, under the resources section, hosting, hosting a family math night, we have a bunch of super cute um, estimation slips for you to choose from and use um, at your event. Okay, because it's a hugely popular um, station, I recommend having um, a whole bunch um, of pencils so that a lot of kids can be filling in their um, predictions at the same time. Now, when I fill my jars, um, I um, don't, I fill it up to the lip and not the lip part. Often, I mean, obviously I've got a, a ribbon here and you can't see it, but you couldn't see this anyway because of the, the lid. Um, so I like to stop my um, filling them right there at the lip. But there's another reason too. Um, you will find that not only do your elementary, your K-6 students get very involved in making their predictions, but the um, older kids and the parents get super involved as well. And because of that, I like to choose my jars that lend themselves well to um, a volume formula. So for example, this jar here, um, uh, could lend itself very well to the rectangular prism volume length times width um, times height. Um, another jar I've used in the past, this one here has a hexagonal shape to it. Um, so you could do the base times the height. Um, again, not the elementary kids, um, but, the, uh, but the parents and um, high school uh, students do this. In fact, at my last event, um, one high school student spent a lot of time measuring and doing lots of number crunching um, to come pretty darn close to um, the, um, the number that was inside the jar. Now, that doesn't, um, I have seen estimates that are way, way, way um, off. So what I'm going to be doing at my next event is using a referent. So giving kids a little bit of a hint. So for example, this is the jar that I'm going to um, have for uh, the K2. And right next to this jar, I'm going to have this jar. This is my referent. This is my hint. And next to this, I have, I'm going to have this little card here. Here's my hint. There are 20 Hershey's Kisses in this jar. Now, can they use this information to help, or this information to help them figure out how many are in this jar? So some good number sense going on there. And my referent for the older kids is this jar right here. And my card is there are 38 gummy bears, okay, in this jar. Now notice that I don't, I didn't use a multiple of 10 here. 
Okay, 38. So now they can get some practice in rounding their numbers as well. I do an activity that's very similar to this in the classroom. Um, and I have another video that's called a twist on the estimation jar. And we get, um, there's a lot of higher order thinking and a lot of super great number sense activities that go on. Um, during that, um, those estimation activities. So um, if you wanna do this in the classroom, I recommend um, checking out that video. And that also is on our site, um, familymathlight.com, under the K6 videos, under the resources um, section. So um, one other, one final thing that I do um, at, uh, at my events is I have a what do you notice poster. Okay, so here's the one that I'm going to have at our next family math meeting. Okay, and you can see here, very open-ended question. What do you notice? Kindergartners could simply write, um, I notice that there are circles. Okay, and they're getting some geometry um, in there. Um, older kids might come up with a pattern in the numbers, and parents or high schoolers might come up with a formula. Um, it's very, very open-ended. But what happens is, I have a, at the estimation table, I have a whole bunch of post-its. If they um, write one of their observations on the post-it note and post it onto the what do you notice poster, then they get a second estimate to put in the estimation jar, okay? So it's a nice incentive for them to look at this, come up with something, um, but also, you know, get a second chance at, at winning um, the jar. So if you have not done uh, an estimation jar at your family Mount Heidi event, I can guarantee you that it's gonna be a very popular station. So have fun.